Hey guys, you're welcome to this channel. I'm Tammy Austin and on this channel I do reactions to all kinds of videos. Today I'll be reacting to a, an interview by a pastor on the Honest Bunch podcast on Rich Africa. So this particular interview is by was given by the Honest Bunch podcast to Dr. Abel, sorry, Pastor Abel Damina. Pastor Abel Damina, if you don't know him, for those who don't know him, he's a Nigerian pastor and he's kind of trending or famous right now for being against other pastors that in the prosperity teachings and he's particular about tithing, not being like something that we should do now is for the Jews in the Old Testament. So for that particular conversation on Titan. I, in this video, I won't be discussing it. I'll be discussing it in another video, so stay tuned. I'll post a another one after this, but I'm here to debunk what he said about Elijah. The part, so we're talking about miracle. Uh, he said something about, I have to read this, I'm oh, sorry. Something about, it wasn't God that answered Elijah's prayers. Okay, okay. Can you... Okay, so the context in which I was dealing with was the fire that came down that Elijah asked to come and he destroyed 250 people. Yes. Where in 2 Kings chapter 1, Elijah said, if I be a man of God, mm. let fire come down. And the fire came down and consumed these 250 people. Mm. Now, why did I say it was not God that answered that prayer? Because in Luke chapter 9, verse 51 to 55, the disciples of Jesus wanted to go to Samaria with Jesus. And on their way to Samaria, Samaria, the Samaritans said they cannot come to their city. So the disciples said to Jesus, should we command fire to come down and delete this city like Elijah did? Mm -hmm. And Jesus turned and rebuked them. Mm. And told them, you know not what manner of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Mm. And they went to another city. Which means if Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, he was not if he was there where Elijah was calling fire to destroy him, him, he would have rebuked him. Mm. Because he changed it. Because he was to destroy life. And he does not support that. Which means if he is God and he was in heaven that time, he for not be made So where did the fire come from, from now? Well, again, the Bible says, neither give place to the devil. Mm. <laughs> it's so, it's so. so a man of God, a man of God can cooperate with Satan over his congregation and bring Satan to destroy people. <laughs> wow. We, uh, we too. <laughs> <laughs> this is it's Elijah that we are talking about. Yes. And do that in, in, in certain prayers, people say, God of Elijah, send that fire. Down fire. No, no, that prayer is not right. Mm -hmm. That prayer is not right, except you don't believe that Jesus is God. That prayer is not right. Yes. These are not the days of Elijah. Yes. These are the days of the manifestation of the sons of God. <laughs> Elijah was a servant. We are sons. We are sons. We are not servants. We are born of God. Elijah was a servant. Nobody was born again till Jesus rose from the dead. Why, why is 100% correct by saying that, that just, just like he said, in every context, there's pretext and there's post-text. And, and how Bible take the wonderfulness? Eh? Something might be said here. And he is in literal heaven right now. <laughs> that's what he said and let's see what the Bible actually said, like what is written in the Bible. Because neither me nor Pastor Abel was there when Elijah allegedly called down fire on the prophets of Baal and the fire killed them. Because that's what he's implying, that's what is implied in the statement. So let's go back to the original story there was a drought in israel and god told elijah in first kings 18 verse 1 he said the word of the lord came to elijah in the in the third year saying go and present yourself to ahab and i will send drain on it and king ahab married a foreign woman who brought her foreign prophets with their god back to Israel and they were worshipping Baal doing all kinds of things. They killed prophets of God 
Elijah was like the only one remaining, so God now punished them with drought. This is God saying, I'm going to restore the rain back to Israel so that there will be food and the famine will end. Elijah now challenged the prophets of Baal to a contest to prove who is the real God. So he said to them in 1 Kings 18 verse 24, Then call you on the name of your gods. I will call on the name of the Lord and the God who answers by fire. He is God. I will say this is where we and most people, every, everybody that says the Lord that answered by fire will be my God is from this place because this is where God proved himself by sending down fire. So now let's talk about what the fire did. Did the fire actually kill any prophets or anybody? Let's see. Elijah said in 1 Kings verse 30 something. Let's see. Verse 37. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that you are the Lord God, that you have turned their hearts back to you again. And then in verse 38 he said, The Lord, sorry, the fire of the Lord fell on fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice, and the wood and the stones and the dust, and it licked up the water that was in the trench. You can now see the fire just came for the sacrifice. They mounted up altars. The prophets of Baal mounted up their own altar and they called. There was a point where they were they had their own chance to cry unto Baal and Baal did not answer. But where the killing of the prophets comes in it was not the fire, it was Elijah himself. And Elijah in 1 Kings 18 verse 40 says, And Elijah said to them, Seize the prophets of Baal, do not let one of them escape. So they seized them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and executed them. So it was Elijah himself that killed them. For him killing them, he has he actually has grounds, legal grounds, based on the law. Deuteronomy 18.20 says, But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the names of other gods, that prophet shall die or shall be put to death. You see in Leviticus, there is a verse about people sacrificing their children or any children of Israel to other gods. And those ones too is punishable by death, by stoning and other forms. So Elijah did not actually call down fire on the prophets. He called down fire on the sacrifice. God to claim the sacrifice and show people who that he is God and he is alive. So I don't know why Pastor Ebed Amina had to say that. <laughs> Use that as an example of how pastors sit over sit over Israel. Say Israel. Sit over their congregation to like with the with the devil, like what he said here, with the devil, you come. Uh, what did he say? Collaborate with the devil to <laughs> over their congregation. It happens. There are some false prophets. We've heard of, the Bible even preaches about says we should watch out for these people. There are people that use demonic powers. They can actually do that. But this is not an example. At this point now, someone will say um, Pastor Abel is committing heresy or whatever because. Now he's contradicting the word of God. He's saying, because if you look at the Old Testament from even Genesis, there are so many places where some actions warrant instant death. Like, and even in the New Testament, when Ananias and Sapphira lied, they died. I guess what he's trying to say is we Christians should not be calling for death. But it's not every time we say God of Elijah send down fire that we're asking for the death of enemies. The issue of people wanting their enemies to die, that is where we will now have debate. And I may kind of side with what he said because at the end of the day, everybody is a soul, both the evil ones and the good ones. Sometimes even Pastor David Ibiome that likes to talk about 
vengeance. He says, any soul you've prayed for, anybody you've prayed for, that you want the person to die, that is harming you, not that you just want someone to die, someone harming you, that you've been praying, God, kill this person or remove this person, and the person has not yet died. It means that person is a soul. Go and preach, stop praying and go and preach to the person. I feel like we should pray for the person's repentance first. Preach to the person and then say, God, let your will be done at this point because it's, the power of life and death is in God's hands. But for Pastor Abel Damina, he has many things that he said that are right. I mean, when I saw the video, I was excited to watch it. I happily tuned in to see in fact, I was like everywhere goes scattered because I'm at the point where I'm like, I think the church is focused on the wrong things every time. Even me myself, there was a point where I was now like paying tight and giving offering, like it was a tax for me to like you know when you invest money, it's not supposed to be an investment. I'm not supposed to be giving because I want God to bless me. I'm supposed to be giving because I want to help and I have the means to help. I'm giving. You see me, I know that at the end of the month, maybe at some point of the month, I will finish my money. So when the salary comes, I've already calculated my offering for the month. So I'll just transfer it or just withdraw and pay. Like that, that's what I was doing at a point. And it was not helping me. I wasn't even, at the point, I was like, am I doing, what, what was my motive for doing this? Because I want to give in God's house willingly or because I'm expecting blessing. And yes, I was expecting blessing. Not that it's wrong for it to expect blessing, but... That should not be your, like, the, re the main reason. So if there's no blessing for me, you stop. So, I just want us to think about this. <laughs> okay. Let us... As Christians, anytime we're doing something, whether I was saying something, we should always think about the motive. Personally, I feel like Pastor Abraham now, had come to the point where he kind of sees himself as someone that is doing something and he, he sees himself as better. At every point in time we should ask God for guidance and to help us not to fall into pride, to feel like we know best. As I am now, I, I'm trying to start reading my Bible again regularly. I want to search the scriptures and I want to ask God for help. And I don't want it to be that at any point in time I'm speaking, I'm saying my opinions, I'm feeling like my opinion is superior to any. Even the ones that I've said is not completely original. It's God that made me realize it at this point in time. There are things that I'm saying now, like before, I used to be the type of person that would be saying, why are you talking about this and all that? But here I am saying it, so there's nothing new, nothing original. All these things, we are just all learning. I don't like the fact that he came out saying some people are not qualified only to now come and make a very big blunder saying something that you, he didn't even say the story correctly he said it completely wrong that was not what happened that was not the purpose of that fire coming down if you want to now debate about the killing you should have separated it from the fire you would have corrected her because the person that asked that question uh, told the lady that asked him about Elijah she's a Muslim that's the, and then um, Mr. Nedu may not be, a, you see, uh, may not be that much of a, I don't think he's a Christian, maybe he grew up in the church, but the way he is now, the way he's moving, he seems like someone that has left, so he cannot remember. Uh, the other man that was saying, wait to, see, this is Elijah we're talking about, it seems like the way I felt too when I was watching, like, maybe... We should backtrack and I saw you, what you're saying is correct because the way you remember it, even if you can't remember the details, you can feel that there's something wrong with the story. So me, I had to now go back and check point by point and I'm realizing, hey, this is why this thing felt strange to me because this is not actually what happened. So let us be careful. I pray that God will guide Pastor Abel back to the point. He started where he has, a, even all these other pastors, they all came from somewhere they had a vision or they, a calling or passion, even though they were not called by God, but they have passion for doing this. And then along the line, they all went and they, they may have gone too far, but I don't believe there's anybody that has gone past the point of correction. Even, uh, what is his name? Pastor Benny Hinn, that most of Nigerian pastors are modeling their whole ministries after. There was a point where he came and apologized for uh, asking, I know they say he has come back to doing that, like when you come out and say, bring 10,000 
for one thousand dollars or just like putting a particular like a fixed money you should bring normally they'll say bring what you have here there's a time you're saying bring a specific amount and above so he came out and actually apologized and said that he kind of lied against the holy spirit or like maybe that was not what the holy spirit asked him to do and the holy spirit has said this is wrong or the holy spirit noticed the holy spirit left and something like that but he apologized so there's nothing that cannot be corrected or cannot be fixed while you're still alive i pray god will help all of us to go back to the right point and show us the right point because most of us think we know until something happens that's when we know that we've been doing something wrong so for everyone that stayed here with me if you liked this video i want to see more please like my video so that the algorithm will recommend it to you and show other people and please stay tuned i'll be making more videos not just on christian content like other contents i react to even movies or things that are trending i've not made more much videos but i'll be making more so if there's any video you would like me to talk about or anything you want me to talk about please put it in the comments subscribe stay blessed and stay safe i'll be seeing you again in another video thank you for tuning in this long with me bye